Hey guys, Max here, and this is your daily market update for yesterday, Thursday, the 16th of December. Now, it was another big news day with developments regarding central banks' decisions on quantitative easing and interest rate rises from the UK, Europe, and Turkey. And we saw the US markets take a turn after their initial bump from the Fed's announcement yesterday and a couple developments in the crypto world. So, what exactly happened? Well, once again, the inefficient market poked its head above the parapet, but swiftly changed its mind. The day before, tech and really the entire market, the entire US market at least, rallied on the Fed's decision to double the pace of its tapering and prepare for interest rate hikes to 0.9% by the end of 2022. Now, while the mainstream media is telling you that this is really hawkish, in my opinion, it really isn't very hawkish, it's quite dovish from the Fed, and it's actually a little bit too dovish and won't be enough to stop inflation in any meaningful way, and it's also still pushing that real solution further away by not raising rates now, which is why I think it's dovish. Now, at first, the markets loved this, again, because it's dovish. For an entire day, no less, they loved it. But then yesterday, they changed their minds and the markets started to hate this new development. Tech companies crashed pretty badly, actually, which is on top of a year that's already been bad for them. Apple dropped 4%, Tesla dropped 5%, Adobe dropped 10% all in one day. And the story was the same across the board, to be honest. Take an innovative, high-tech, high-speed, low-drag company based on software or electronics, something to do with the internet or new technology, and it probably did badly yesterday. Why is that? Well, interest rates rising means that debt and capital will be more expensive, which makes it more expensive to grow a company. And these companies are all based on absolutely rapid growth for years on end. None of them are profitable at the moment. None of them are even close to being profitable at the moment. And they all need 50% year over year revenue growth for five years into the future before they get to a point where they can become profitable. So higher interest rates means less growth in the future, less profitability and lower valuations. But what doesn't make sense with all this is that at first, the first time the markets heard this news, including these tech stocks, they rallied on the developments of interest rates rising only to then fall the day after. Now, I really don't know for 100% why this happened, but my theory is that they rallied on the news that the Fed was going to fight inflation, which, by the way, is false. They're not really going to fight inflation. They just want the markets and the world to think that they're going to fight inflation. But the markets rallied on that idea because they were a little scared by rising inflation. So that gave them the confidence that the markets would be safe from inflation getting even higher. Then it all kind of sunk in. They looked at the actual data, they looked at the actual proposals, and they realized that these interest rates rising by 0.9% in a year in the future and tapering accelerating by a couple months isn't going to be nearly enough to actually reduce inflation in the long run, which means it's going to continue to rise, which is bad for the economy. And then on top of that, debt will still get more expensive. So that's not a good thing for the markets either. Now, I'm not saying that I'm absolutely sure that is what happened and that's what changed market sentiment, but it is what I suspect happened. What we do now know for sure is that sentiment turned back around, did a 180 degree spin based on no real new information because this market is crazy. There are ridiculous amounts of capital at play in the market, including from millions of retail investors who just chase trends and hype and don't really know what they're doing. And the market is just in a bubble. And this is what happens when you have a crazy market that is overvalued. What else happened in the world then? Well, the Bank of England, the central bank for the United Kingdom, had their meeting to decide on what monetary policy to pursue. And somehow all the media pundits predicted that they would do nothing despite the fact that the Bank of England had been pretty outspoken in telling people that they were going to raise rates. What were the actual figures? Well, interest rates in the UK have risen from 0.1% to 0.25%, so 15 basis points. The UK is now expecting interest rates to rise to 1% by September 2022, and by the end of the year, probably even a little bit higher than that. We may even find ourselves at 0.5% interest rates by February, if inflation continues to grow as it has over the last couple months. Now, the Bank of England also announced they were not going to be extending their asset purchases in the future and essentially announced that they would taper as well. Now, this was surprising to people at Bloomberg or CNBC, but again, it shouldn't have been. Like I just said, the Bank of England has been telling us at every possible opportunity that they were going to raise interest rates actually last month, but at the last minute, they changed their minds and backed down. 
This time though, they stuck true and actually rose rates. Why did they do it? Well, inflation in the UK spiked up this last month a pretty worrying amount, meaning that we are now sitting at over 5% inflation, with expectations that that number will continue to increase to 6% in the new year. Now, the FTSE 250, or basically the medium-sized companies that really make up the British economy, you know, not companies like BP or Shell, well, they jumped on this news as it shows that the Bank of England is actually going to fight inflation. The pound also rose on this news as it is good news for the currency, though not enough to erase the fools from its highs earlier this year. In my opinion, this is actually really good news, and it's what every other central bank should be doing as well. Again, this will hurt markets in the short term, over a year or so, but in the long run, it will bring inflation back down and provide a stronger economy, which is what the central banks should be looking at, not the markets. The remit of the central banks of the world is not to keep the 1% wealthy and they shouldn't be prioritizing asset prices in the markets just because it's where their friends and themselves have all of their money. Now this news from the Bank of England is actually quite hawkish because it showed that the Bank of England will act swiftly if needed as opposed to other central banks like the Fed who only ever make decisions about what they'll do in three or six months time which means inflation continues to rise in the meantime. The Bank of England also meets every month or almost every month to discuss rates and quantitative easing and things like that so they have the ability to act much swifter than other central banks that meet less frequently. Now, why is the Bank of England doing this? Well, the current government wanted to be the party of low tax and low spending, high growth and fiscal conservatism, but they never really got the chance for that as COVID ruined it all. This, to me, feels like the real conservatives coming back trying to put their agenda back into force and enforcing fiscal responsibility on the country as they should. There is also the fact that some UK government debt is based on inflation rates, not interest rates, so the British government can't just allow inflation to spiral out of control like the US can. Now that's what's happening in the UK where I live, but what's happening across the channel in Europe? Well, the Central Bank of Europe, the European Central Bank and Lagarde, the chairman, whatever her position is, I can't remember, the Jerome Powell of Europe, well, she's again maintaining her position that interest rates don't need to rise at all because inflation is transitory. Lagarde is scarily bad at her job and to make it all even worse, as a result of the way the EU is set up, she isn't even remotely accountable to the electorate. The ECB's asset purchases were supposed to be ending quite abruptly, which may have given the Eurozone some respite from the high inflation it's seeing, as high as the US or even higher in some parts. But Lagarde decided that it was too steep a decline, so she has doubled the planned asset prices for the next few months in order to ease the transition. That means European quantitative easing is actually going to continue long into 2022, when it was supposed to have stopped by February. This is monumentally stupid and Lagarde and the ECB's actions will result in Europeans suffering. It will be interesting to see whether or not this has any impact on the austere nations in the EU and their outlook towards the EU. There have already been rising tensions recently as countries like Denmark and the Netherlands have been forced to pick up the slack and pay more into the EU as the, EU, as the UK has left a big black hole in the budget. Add on to that the awful monetary policy that the ECB has been pursuing, their seeming disregard for fiscal responsibility in any sense of the word, and the fact that these countries tend to be very inflation averse, and I can see an unhappy relationship forming. Now go just a little bit eastwards, and Turkey is again falling off a cliff as well, as its central bank has just announced it is again going to cut interest rates as inflation soars above 20%. At this point, this is basically suicide by central bank. The administration is absolutely insane and has this weird idea that its economy is being destroyed by high interest rates and the only way to get the economy to grow is to slash them to make borrowing cheaper so that the businesses can expand, which isn't an awful idea on its own, but when inflation is already sitting above 20%, it is an awful idea. The government has literally come out and said that there is no relationship between inflation and interest rates, which is of course absurd and just wrong, but it means that they don't have to take responsibility for what's happening in the country. 
Now, in crypto news, there are two small developments. The first being that the NFT craze continues to accelerate as more and more businesses and celebrities get involved in trying to make quick cash, even as the price of NFTs is actually falling across the board. I don't think there has ever been as bad an investment as NFTs since tulip mania in the Netherlands. Now, Stan Lee's official Twitter account is being used by Marvel to shill NFTs to his fans, something that no doubt has him spinning in his grave. On top of that, Melania Trump has announced that she's going to be selling a whole bunch of NFTs for no reason other than the fact that it will make her some money. This entire sector is insane. It has no basis in reality and will absolutely collapse at some point in the future. The 1% of NFT users who actually create and distribute these NFTs will make money. Almost everyone else, however, will lose out in the long run. Now, in other crypto news, Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, is in talks with Dubai and Abu Dhabi to move their headquarters over to the UAE. Now, this comes after they were forced out of Hong Kong and after they couldn't make a deal with authorities in Singapore. Someone in the comments of a video a few days ago actually predicted it would be Dubai that they end up in, and I can't remember if I replied or not to that comment, but I didn't think it would be Dubai due to a lack of talent. But fair enough, that guy was right, so good prediction, well done there, mate. Now that is pretty much it for the day. Again, this is a very busy week for monetary policy, and given how high inflation is all over the world, I feel like it's easily the most important topic to cover right now. I've still missed out a bunch of developments regarding China and their economy again, just because I don't want these daily updates to get too long, but I am still planning on covering a lot of those things I've missed over the last couple of days when the weekend arrives. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like and a comment to bless the YouTube algorithm. If you want more content like this, then check out our Patreon and join our community of investors. You get access to our Discord, loads of exclusive content like private live streams, extra videos, and buy and sell alerts for my own personal portfolio. There's a link in the description to masterworks.io, a site that allows you to buy fractional shares of art from world famous artists like Banksy, which can be a great way to diversify your portfolio with non-market correlated assets. There's also a link in the description to BlockFi, which will give you up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you use it. You can also get 9% interest on stablecoins like USDC, which is a far higher rate than you'll get from any savings account these days. Just make sure not to use Tether. Thank you all for the support. Thanks for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.